Day to day, people who live with bipolar disorder spend most of their time depressed. In fact, the percentage of time spent depressed versus hypomanic or manic is around 70% versus 30%, sometimes 80% to 20%. People with bipolar 2 disorder spend even greater amount of their time in a depressive state. One of the notions I was taught when I was very early in my career is that bipolar 2 disorder is a milder form of bipolar disorder. I sometimes refer to this as the decaffeinated bipolar disorder. Well, so untrue. It turns out that bipolar disorder is as burdensome as bipolar 1. Bipolar 2 disorder has more chronic, more recurrent depression. It also has a higher rate of rapid cycling when compared to bipolar 1, has higher rates of comorbidity, when compared to bipolar one, and has a higher suicide completion rate than bipolar one. So my conclusion is this is just as severe, if not more severe, as is bipolar one. The challenge we have is to make this diagnosis. So to orient you to the slide, this is what's called inter-observer agreement. To what degree do professionals agree on the diagnosis? Benchmark, we want at least 0.4 agreement. Bipolar 2 just makes the cut, coming in at 0.4. Bipolar 1 comes in at 0.56. So what I can take away from this is bipolar 1 disorder has got relatively good inter-observer agreement. Bipolar 2 is a bit fuzzy. Look at major depressive disorder, coming in at 0.28, so quite low. So what I take away from this is the more depression the patient's experiencing who comes into the clinic for consultation, the more they've been experiencing depression, the greater the likelihood we're going to make a misdiagnosis. And this is something always to keep in mind in every depressed patient presenting the possibility that that depression is more parsimoniously explained by bipolar disorder. Now, one of the aspects about bipolarity <clears throat> is that not only is depression polarity predominant, but depression is polarity first. And what that means is, is that depression is the first clinical presentation. Take a good history. The patient has no hypomania or mania yet. Mother Nature's holding the card. And so what we see is this transition across time. I call it the one to 2% rule. So if we had 100 people in our office today with depression, no current past history of hypomania or mania, and they come back 10 years later, between 10 and 20 of them now have declared bipolarity. This is why when you diagnose major depressive disorder and the patient returns a year later, three years later, seven years later, not uncommonly the presentation changes. They start complaining of more anxiety, more irritability. The antidepressant's not working as well anymore. Now that doesn't necessarily mean, aha, they have bipolar disorder. But what it does in fact mean is I'm going to have to maybe rethink this diagnosis. And before I call you treatment resistant major depression, let's make darn sure you don't have underlying bipolarity.